you know, we're in the midst of the largest wealth transfer in the history of mankind. Over the next couple of decades, some estimates say as much as $65 trillion of wealth is going to be transferred from older generation to the next generation. Great share of that wealth, as much as 50%, is in real estate. Well, welcome everyone to the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel and the Jim and Java program. We've got with us today one of our favorite guests, very popular, Eric Fleshhood with the Crew Foundation, $150 million in assets. Eric has been the CEO of the Crew Foundation since 2016. He's been with Crew for over 25 years and has the respect and credibility in the industry. He knows what he's talking about and today we're going to be interviewing him on the topic of real estate. So Eric, we're looking forward to your message. Take it away. Jim, I think today uh, our topic is going to be of interest to a lot of people because it, uh, it, it is a major source of wealth in the United States that is available for people to give and that is real estate and a lion's a, a, a great share of that wealth as much as 50% is in real estate. So that's where a lot of the nation's wealth is. And so it, it, it is smart of us to think about how can we help our donors when they're thinking through how to support the causes that they love and, and are near and dear to their heart. How do I get everything into this cause, including the real estate I've been blessed with? Mm. Wow, that is exciting. And Eric, uh, you, when I hear real estate, I think immediately my house. But you're thinking even more outside the box, even with your your own home. And you've had we've had you've had to deal with some very creative things. Uh, tell us about getting beyond just the traditional in real estate as well. Yes, yes. In fact, Jim, probably what we're talking about is um, uh, more, more than just your primary uh, residence, which certainly can be gifted, but most people need that to live in. Um, and so you need to look beyond that. And uh, we're talking about farmland. We're talking about uh, commercial properties. Uh, we're talking about um, vacant lots, vacation homes, um, even uh, easements. Any of these things can be given uh, to charity and can have a great benefit to both the donor and to the charitable cause. We have had the um, pleasure of helping a number of donors here at Crew Foundation with gifts like this. We've seen uh, farms donated. We've helped donors give strip malls. We've helped them uh, give uh, apartment complexes. Uh, and they've turned out to be great gifts. Wow. Well, Eric, you've piqued my interest. I, I love what I'm hearing. Uh, if I am a nonprofit leader, where do I start with that? Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble to be honest, as a nonprofit leader, just even, even asking for a gift at year end. And now you're, you want me to start to talk about someone's property. And, and would you be get willing to give your strip mall? Would you be willing to give your vacation home? Uh, where do we start with that? And how do we get our, our partners to even begin thinking that way? Sure, sure. Well, a big part of the issue for a lot of a lot of folks is going to be the tax bill. And that's going to be a pain point that they're always thinking about. Coming here at the end of the year, you know, November is a big month for property taxes across the United States. And so here at year end, uh, people with those vacation homes or those those properties, that tax bill comes and they start to question, okay, do I want to re-up for another year? Or, or I'm feeling that tax pinch again, there's gotta be a way to make this better. And for the charitably minded person, there certainly is. And so 
uh, you're, you're heading into the time of year where this, these things are on people's minds. And you as a nonprofit leader can bring a solution. You can bring something that can both help relieve their pain and give them a greater sense of satisfaction that they are um, advancing the causes that are near and dear to their hearts. So I think this is a great time to be um, uh, exploring this in conversation with people. I'll give you, give you an example, Jim. We, we were on a donor visit and the, the, the partner mentioned that they were uh, in the midst of selling their strip mall. And uh, we were able to introduce to them in that conversation the idea of a zero tax sale. And we can get into this in our conversation, but the, the, simple, the basic idea is if you could achieve zero taxes on this sale, and we could show you how to do that uh, using a charitable gift component, would that be something that would interest you? Right away, he said, stop the presses. He called his real estate agent. He called his uh, accountant right there while we were in the room with him, said, take the property off the market. We're going we're gonna to rethink this. We're going in a different direction, and uh, we're going to structure this uh, with a charitable gift so that we can redirect all the taxes due uh, to charity. Wow. Eric, it's got to be rewarding, frankly, for you to be of such value and service to our partners. I, I think all of us, you know, we, we always think it's, it's take, 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 take. But I feel like so much of what you do uh, is giving back to people. So your service uh, it is a value to people. And yes, do we benefit from that? But your, your advice, your counsel uh, allows them to do what they want to do anyway, but in a greater manner. Uh, uh, they are they're able to give more and it frees that up. You know, I feel like it's not so much persuading donors to do something as much as it is giving them permission as it is opening their eyes and just, you know, for, for example, Jim, many don't realize that when it comes to a gift of real estate, they don't have to give 100%. They can give a percentage interest of their real estate to charity. Now, that fact alone can change the whole paradigm for a donor when they realize, oh, wait a minute, I can give. And in fact, going back to this uh, strip mall example, uh, we ran calculations that showed if, if uh, this donor couple gave 39% of their ownership in this strip mall, it would achieve a zero tax sale for them. And they were all about that. Um, and it's funny on this zero tax sale concept, how so often that, per that magic percentage is somewhere between 25% and 40% of the asset. Now, most donors coming into the conversation are thinking, well, if I don't want to have to pay any taxes, I'm going to have to give the whole thing over. That's the, that's the way you achieve that. That's actually not how the math works and how taxation works. So just making people aware of things like that brings us so much joy because it a light bulb goes on. And when you're talking to people who've been successful in real estate, they know how to get things done. They're typically action-oriented people. And when they glom onto an idea like this, there really is no stopping them. It, 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 uh, it's amazing to see the enthusiasm. Wow, I love that. Well, Eric, I know with stocks as an example, um, you, the big mistake that you don't want to make is you don't want to sell your stock and then give the money to the organization. It's the same way with property. Uh, do you want to donate the, the deed, the title, whatever, of, of the property over to the nonprofit? Uh, how, how does that process work? Yes, great question, Jim. And the short answer is yes. And let me, let me explain this. Um, when you sell a property first, you automatically trigger, in most cases, a capital gains tax, all right? That's gonna be triggered. So when you're giving cash from the from the sale proceeds, you're giving after-tax dollars to charity. Now, you're going to receive an income tax deduction uh, 
for that cash give like you normally do, but you've already triggered another tax before you do so. Now, if you were to uh, contrast that with giving a piece of the property before the sale, you are bypassing that capital gain tax. And when the property is sold, the charity doesn't pay tax on their property, but you still get the income tax deduction for the fair market value of the piece of property that you gave. Mm. By giving before the sale, you will realize two tax savings. You will realize a capital gains tax savings and an income tax savings. When you sell it first, you only realize a single tax savings. So by giving the asset first, you, it's a double tax savings. And that's a huge benefit uh, to people who own these assets and are facing uh, tax bills. Mm. Wow. Well, Eric, I know we've addressed this in the past, but I think some of our people are new to this channel and uh, maybe they just need to hear this again. Um, they may be sitting like, some some leaders out there and their head is spinning and they're saying wow this is great that eric fleshhood knows all this uh but how do i have a conversation i i hardly know anything about uh estate planning estate design sale of property uh i only know what you've told us how do i if how do i enter into a conversation and what do i what do I do once I've had that? Do I direct them towards an expert? And, and how do I do that? Yes, great question, Jim. And we, we, I deal with this all the time inside of my own organization because yes, not everyone has the time to be a plan giving expert. And so um, the thing that I want your, your listeners, if you're a nonprofit leader, if you're a major gifts officer, the main thing that you need to, to be able to articulate is that these types of gifts can be made and that they carry extra benefits for both the organization and for the donor. What you don't have to become an expert in is how it is done. So that it can be done is going to be news and welcome news to many of your constituents. And that's the message you want to be able to articulate. It's a simple message. Hey, uh, you mentioned that um, you're going to be selling this piece of property. Uh, did you know that this might be a great time to be considering making a gift of a portion of that property? And it could come with great benefits for you. Hmm. A simple statement like that uh, in a conversation with a donor can get the ball rolling. So you want to be listening out for those life events, you know, those things they might mention in passing. We're moving, I'm selling my business, I'm heading into retirement next year, and I'm exiting um, uh, this piece of property we've been managing. Um, and by listening out for those things and just making a simple comment, simple suggestion, you can get the ball rolling. Now, once you've got someone interested, Jim, what do you do next? You may be in an organization that doesn't have a foundation arm built into it, or you may not have a plan giving officer to come, come alongside you. So what do you do in that case? Well, Jim, uh, we live in a country where there are literally hundreds. Every state has uh, either a community foundation or another foundation that will serve your nonprofit in this space and will be able to help you transact a gift like this. Um, and so I would um, uh, look to your local plan giving council for referrals to foundations that do this. Uh, look up for, look up, uh, Google, do a Google search on your community foundations in your state or in your local area, and they'll be able to help you. Mm. Wow, Eric, what a great way to be thinking about a non-traditional way to give and real estate property great way to do it eric as we wrap up today any final comments that you would give to our audience we would recommend yeah i would say a couple of things jim one important principle to remember is that you want to make these types of gifts before you enter into any legally binding agreement of sale 
It's okay if the property is on the market as long as it's not under contract. It's also okay to have an interested buyer in the wings. You know, you could have buyers circling around a property interested, and that's okay too. You just don't want to be in, the donor doesn't want to be in an illegally binding agreement of sale and then make the gift. It's, too, it's, it's, that's going to cause trouble. So uh, that's one point of education that you want to be making to your constituents when you talk about gifts of property. I, uh, people should also be aware that um, property can be given in anticipation of a sale, right? But it could also be a long-term hold. So if you've got a rental property that's being gifted to you, it's cash flow, flow positive, it's generating a steady stream of income, that's going to be passive income to your nonprofit, meaning you pay no tax on it, the donor won't pay any tax on it, um, and uh, you could, it could be a long-term hold and a source of long-term revenue for your nonprofit. Now, all of this is predicated on the fact that there's no mortgage or debt involved, and that'll make it tax-free. But um, I, I, you, I want your listeners to be aware that it could be an immediate sale you're looking at or a long-term hold, depending on uh, the, both your donor's objectives and the needs of your nonprofit. Terrific. Well, Eric, once again, you're a wealth of knowledge. You've brought some great tips, suggestions, non-traditional methods to us. I appreciate it. Thanks again for your time.